الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So brothers and sisters, we continue with the chapter باب القناعة, the chapter regarding being content with whatever Allah سبحانه وتعالى has blessed and the negative aspect of begging for one's needs. And as mentioned in the last session that we are to focus to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs and we should be content with Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with. So uh, the narration that we begin with today is on the authority of Abu Burda radiallahu anhu who says that he heard from Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, one of the companions of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. And Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu anhu relates خَرَجْنَا مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ We once left with the Prophet peace and blessings upon him فِي غَزْوَةٍ in a campaign وَنَحْنُ سِتَّةُ نَفَرْ And we were six people alongside the Prophet peace and blessings upon him and he had grouped us into these six people or this group of six بَيْنَنَا بَعِيرْ And six of us would be allocated to one uh, camel نَعْتَقِبُهُ فَنَقِبْتُ أَقْدَامَنَا وَنَقِبَتْ قَدَمَيْ So according to this narration, Abu Musa radiallahu anhu says that we took turns on the camel and our feet, due to the excessive walking, were swollen. And he recalls, Abu Musa radiallahu anhu, that my feet also became swollen. وَسَقَطَتْ أَظْفَارِي To the extent that my nails also began falling off. فَكُنَّا نَلُفُّ عَلَىٰ أَرْجُلِنَا مِنَ الْخِرَقِ And we began tying rags of pieces of cloth around our feet because of the excessive walking. فَسُمِّيَتْ غَزْوَةُ ذَاتِ الرِّقَاءِ And he says this is the reason why this campaign was called ذَاتُ الرِّقَاءِ ذَاتُ الرِّقَاءِ refers to the campaign where rags were tied. لِمَا كُنَّا نَعْصِبُ عَلَىٰ أَرْجُلِنَا مِنَ الْخِرَقِ and this is because we had tied rags on our feet. Qala Abu Burda, Abu Burda radiallahu anhu, who is the narrator who has heard this from Abu Musa radiallahu anhu says that after Abu Musa radiallahu anhu narrated this incident or this hadith, thumma kariha dhalik, he disliked the fact that he had shared this information or this event with the companions or with his students. And he would say, مَا كُنْتُ أَصْنَعُ بِأَنْ أَذْكُرَهُ That I did not like to mention this. And the, the, narrator, Abu, uh, the narrator Abu Burda says, كَأَنَّهُ كَرِهَ أَنْ يَكُونَ شَيْئًا مِنْ عَمَلِهِ أَفْشَى That Abu Musa radiallahu anhu feared that if his good deeds are exposed, then this may possibly become riya. May, it may become uh, ostentation, showing. So he feared that I should not have related this incident, that this is a sacrifice that I went through. It was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I should not have related it to the people. Uh, it's possible that I may, uh, this may be considered riya or ostentation, showing off uh, to the people the good deeds. So the purpose of this narration being quoted in this chapter of Qana'a is that these were simple people, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they were simple people uh, in this campaign where there was a lot of struggle, their feet became swollen, their nail, nails fell off, and they had to tie rags because of the excessive walking. Uh, and, 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 you know, sometimes we're so accustomed to the great blessings that we have, we can't even walk a kilometer. We need to get into our cars to run for the grocery, to run for our basic needs. And if we don't have the car or the vehicle or the bus or whatever it may be, we feel as if uh, we, half of us is gone. So uh, basically, the, 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 the purpose of this narration is that these people, they went through great sacrifices. They went through great struggles. That even the battle came, became uh, known as that riqa So many of those companions had rags tied on their feet because of this, the swelling and their nails falling off. Uh, but the the idea was that it's it's something of this world, a little sacrifice, a little struggle for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in this world. It's not perpetual. It's not going to continue forever. 
uh, we will meet our end one day. And that's when the real beginning will start and the beginning of the real life, which is of, that, of the hereafter. So Imam Nawawi lists this narration to give us the understanding that these were great role models and we should, we should take some lessons from their lives that they were simple people, they sacrificed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and similarly if we sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake we'll be able to achieve our real goals to meet the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. So the little we have we should be content with. We should be content with and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessings in what we have. The next narration on the strength of Amr ibn Taghlab radiallahu an. He says, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings upon him, was once seated, utiya bimalin, and a large amount of wealth was brought in his presence. And according to another narration, aw sabiyin, it was a group of captives that were brought in the presence of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Whatever the case, faqassamahu, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, distributed that wealth or whatever belongings that came. Fa فَأَعْطَى رِجَالًا وَتَرَكَ رِجَالًا The Prophet peace and blessings upon him from that distribution he gave to a group of people and he left out another group of people. So the Prophet's distribution was selective. He selected a particular group of people and he gave them. And other, others that came he, he did not give them much or he didn't give them anything. فَبَلَغَهُ أَنَّ الَّذِينَ تَرَكَ عَتَبُوا so someone came in the presence of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him and told him that there's a group of people that you have left out and they are displeased. That why didn't they get a portion of that wealth and that charity? They're feeling as if they were ignored. فَحَمِدَ اللَّهَ ثُمَّ أَثْنَى عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ قَالَ The Prophet ﷺ gathered all the companions and the Prophet peace and blessings upon him began by, as he usually did, by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and exalting the Creator. And then he gave his, his message. He said, Amma ba'd. As for what follows, فَوَاللَّهِ إِنِّي لَأُعْطِيَ الرَّجُلَ وَأَدْعُ الرَّجُلَ That I, I take the name of Allah, that I certainly give to a group of people, and I leave others. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَالَّذِي أَدَعُوا أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الَّذِي أُعْطِيَ That those people who I have left out, they are more beloved to me than those who I have given. And then he gave the reason. He said, That I give to those groups of people When I sense that their hearts are weak and their hearts are going through a difficulty, an anxiety, a worry or a concern. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, and I have full confidence on another group of people that Allah has placed in their hearts reliance, independence, strength, khair, goodness. And amongst these groups of people are also Amr ibn Taghlab radiallahu anhu who's narrating this narration. And Amr ibn Taghlab says, فَوَاللَّهِ مَا أُحِبُّ أَنَّ لِي بِكَلِمَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم That I, by Allah, would not forsake for these words of the Prophet ﷺ regarding me, even a hundred camels, red camels. That means this, this statement of the Prophet ﷺ was so beloved to me that the Prophet ﷺ said, amongst the good people who have contentment in their, in their hearts is also Amr ibn Taghlab. So Amr ibn Taghlab says, you give me a hundred red camels, which, is, which was a great commodity. You give me that in exchange of what the Prophet ﷺ said, I would decline that. I would rather keep the statement of the Prophet with me, with me than take the material of this world. So here again this narration shows that the Prophet peace and blessings upon him when he saw the weakness in the hearts of those who had recently accepted Islam or those who were losing hope, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him gave them a little of the wealth uh, and he left out some and those that he left out he knew that they were, they were strong, they were firm in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had the the praiseworthy traits of contentment, of qana'a, of relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. And these are all traits of faith. They are traits of iman. When a person has strong faith, they're able to be content with little. They're able to 
give whatever is additional for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're able to balance between the material of this world and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has, has regarded this as a great trait. We should try and strive for it. And we should be content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. This is a praiseworthy trait. And again, uh, when the Prophet ﷺ praised certain companions, this was very beloved to them. You know, uh, we seek the pleasure of other human beings. We seek the pleasures of authority, of people who are famous, etc. But how many of us really seek the true pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? About the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Like one individual uh, uh, mentioned to me, uh, that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, on the day of judgment, he will make shafa'a, he will make uh, intercession on the day of judgment. And when he makes shafa'a, according to some narrations, he will be told, the Prophet ﷺ will be told that this is an individual who had committed these offenses. So he is entitled to enter the hellfire. But the Prophet ﷺ, he will make shafa'a. And he will come to realize that this is someone from my ummah who committed these errors and I'm making shafa'a for that person. So the individual mentioned that, is this not a, an embarrassment to stand in the presence of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, and our sin are exposed before the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him? So would we rather want to be in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ on the day of judgment where he calls us without any form of intercession? As some narrations point out that those believers who are excelling in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him, the Prophet ﷺ will immediately identify them and they will be invited to, by the Prophet peace and blessings upon him to drink from the kawthar without any form of intercession or any special arrangements. So this is what we call true honor, true pleasure to please the Prophet peace and blessings upon him, to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow that. And we can only achieve this if we have this balance and this contentment that these narrations are indicating towards. The next narration on the strength of Hakim ibn Hizam radiallahu anhu. We also read a narration in the last session about Hakim ibn Hizam. So this is very similar to that. Hakim ibn Hizam says, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him told him, Al-yadul ulya khayrub min al yad sufla The upper hand is far better than the lower hand. And we also mentioned that there are several interpretations to this. But the most common one is the giving hand is far better than the receiving hand. وَبْدَأْ بِمَنْ تَعُولُ And the Prophet ﷺ said, always begin with those people who are under your responsibility, under your obligation. So if we, are, if we have dependents, then it's our obligation to maintain our responsibility in relation to that. If our relatives, if our family members, they are suffering, they need help, then our, our charity should begin... Charity begins from home, right? It starts right from the beginning. وَبْدَأْ بِمَنْ تَعُولُ Begin with those who are under your obligation, your responsibility. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, then said, وَخَيْرُ الصَّدَقَةِ مَا كَانَ عَنْ ظَهْرِ غِنًا That the best form of charity is when a person has surplus. ظَهْرَ غِنًا When a person has more than what is required. They have extra. They have additional. So this additional, this extra amount, this surplus is dedicated for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. We read a narration not too long ago about the companion of the Prophet peace and blessings upon him who the Prophet peace and blessings upon him told that there was an individual from amongst the Banu Israel who allocated three portions of his wealth. One for himself, one for relatives and family and one for the poor. And he would, he would survive on his farming land. So the clouds would specifically come to his piece of land and would shower down rain and it would be vegetation. Vegetation would grow. And this was special arrangement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ulama who explain this narration, they say one reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates growth for the person who shares his wealth and who, who cares about others. And the surplus dedicates for helping those who are in need, those who are suffering. وَمَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْ يُعِفَّهُ اللَّهِ And the Prophet mentions in this narration that those people who, who would like to abstain from banging, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow them, will facilitate that where they will remain pure. وَمَنْ يَسْتَغْنِي يُغْنِهِ اللَّهِ And the person who wants to become self-sufficient, independent, does not want to ask others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them that position. So 
basically these these two statements that the Prophet ﷺ indicate that a person who makes the effort of remaining independent, Allah will make them independent. And a person who constantly relies on others or creation, then they will become dependent to the creation or others. Whereas a person who always connects with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relies upon Allah, has qana'a, has this contentment with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed, Allah will make them ghani. Allah will make them wealthy by heart. So even if they have little, they will be content with that. And they will see blessings in that. Another narration on the authority of Abu Abdurrahman, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu anhu. He says, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him said, لا تلحفو في المسألة Never ever persist in your asking, in your begging. فَوَاللَّهِ For indeed by Allah, لا يسألني أحد The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, none of you that come to me when you ask me and I give you and if you have just insisted and I have just given you because of your insistence and I am unwilling but I've given it to you because of your insistence فَيُبَارَكْ لَهُ فِيمَا أُعْطِيَ There will be never, there will, will you find blessings in that. So many times the Prophet ﷺ, he would, there would be charity and people would come and they would insist. So the Prophet ﷺ would, would on their insistence give them whatever he could. But the Prophet ﷺ said, look, this wealth is very attractive as we read in the previous narrations. It's very appealing. And if you're coming for something that is not really required and I give you upon this insistence, you will not find barakah in it. You will not find blessings in it. It won't fulfill your needs. So we'll have plenty, but it's still not, ends are still not meeting. We're still struggling. No matter what we, what we do to try and meet the ends, you know, everyone's working. We're working extra hours, but still ends are not meeting. There's no blessings. Why? So one of the reasons is that we're so, we're so greedy for this. But if we are content with little, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the little that we have, ends will meet. In fact, we'll have surplus. We'll be able to give charity. We'll be able to do things that are more important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us barakah and blessings in our lives also. May Allah bless us with that inshaAllah. The next narration, and we'll conclude with this narration, on the strength of Abu Abdurrahman, Awf ibn Malik al-Ashja'i radiyallahu an. He says, Kunna inda Rasulillah. We were once with the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. And he says, I recall we were about nine, eight, or at least seven people. Ala tubayyuna Rasulallah. The Prophet all of a sudden said, Will you not take the oath of allegiance with the Messenger of Allah? Wa kunna hadithi ahdi bi bay'atin. And the narrator points out, that we had just taken the oath of allegiance with the Prophet ﷺ earlier. فَقُلْنَا We told the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, قَدْ بَايَعْنَاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ We had just taken the oath of allegiance recently. The Prophet ﷺ then repeated, أَلَا تُبَايِعُونَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Will you not take an oath of allegiance with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ? So, when the Prophet ﷺ repeated this, فَبَسَطْنَا أَيْدِيَنَا we stretched our hands to take the oath of allegiance again. وَقُلْنَا And we repeated. We said with the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. قَدْ بَايَعْنَاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ we are, we are taking the oath of allegiance again with you, O Messenger of Allah. فَعَلَى مَا نُبَايِعُكَ What shall we take the oath of allegiance upon? The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Promise that you will always worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا You will never associate a partner with the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They agreed. وَالصَّلَوَاتِ الْخَمْسِ And you will always be firm on the five prayers. وَتُطِيعُ اللَّهِ And you will always obey every command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They agreed to all of this. They took the oath of allegiance. And the Prophet sallallahu then called them close. وَأَسَرَّ كَلِمَةً خَفِيفًا And he repeat, he asked them to repeat and he said this very softly. He said it in a soft voice. He said, can you promise to me and can you take the oath of allegiance? لا تسألوا الناس شيئا That you'll never ask anyone for your personal needs. You will only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you promise this to me? And they did. فَلَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ بَعْضَ أُولَٰئِكَ nafr. The narrator points out, I've seen some of these people who were with me when these seven, eight or nine people took allegiance. Even if their whips would fall. Their whips would fall. 
right? It would fall off. Then they would get off their animals and they would pick it up. فَمَا يَسْأَلُوا أَحَدًا يُنَاوِلُهُ إِيَّا They would see people walking past by and they would not ask them, can you pass this to me? They would actually get off the camel, get off the animal and pick up the whip or whatever had fallen, their belongings. So this is how they lived up to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's allegiance, bay'ah, uh, the promises that they made to the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Some of the ulama also point out that from this narration it shows the importance of tajdeedul ahd, to constantly repeat our, our tenets of faith and renew it at time and again. Okay, and I mentioned many times that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi at the occasion of uh, waking up for tahajjud, he would always repeat, Allah is the truth, Jannah is a reality, it's the truth, the hereafter is a reality, it's going to come, wasa'atu haq. These are all things that are unseen, we don't see them. And if we don't renew our faith in them, then we lose faith. We, it becomes weak. And then when we have weak faith, it's difficult to practice the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of the Prophet sallallahu So in this narration, the, the, the point to repeat, to renew uh, the promises that we've made and we've all made an agreement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions we all had as, as arwah, as ruh, as, as souls. We gathered in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we made these promises. So the reason why Imam Nawi selected this narration it shows that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, asked them and requested them that this is part of the allegiance that we don't ask anyone for our needs. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we have qana'ah, when we have contentment, if we really need anything, we'll ask the Creator. We'll make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will facilitate what is, what is necessary for us. So we make dua that Allah bless us with qana'ah, with contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us barakah and blessings in all our wealth and our belongings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us success in this temporary world and the everlasting life of the hereafter. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanatah wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibu wa tarda min al-qawni wal-amali wa niyati wal-hadi wal-huda innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tuba'alina mawlana innaka anta tawabu rahim سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله